coming up this week on Ralph and Vicky's Archer's Choice. week's Archer's Choice, and this week, well, we're heading south. We're gonna head south. We're gonna head down to Florida for our first ever deer hunt. Hoppy asked us to, to drive down. He needed down. some help management. Yeah. Too so who are you does. gonna call? The Doe Busters? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> we also have our new boat. We decided to take our boat down there. We got our tracker, and it's it's a bow fishing one. Yeah. And it's rigged up for bow fishing. But and... it wasn't the right color for him, so he decided he needed to camouflage it himself. Okay, here's the deal. You guys check it out. Tell me what you think. Because if it's a good job, say, Ralph, that's a good job. Because lately I've just been because mentally Ralph, beat job. upon. Beat upon. Just think about it this way. You could always just paint boats for a living. Starting this process out, I'm going to give you a few ideas. Number one, I drew up and I made stencils myself. Heavier, car heavier paper. And the best thing to do before you start cut, spraying all these stencils out, once you make your first cut, what you want to do is grab these and lightly spray them on more of the same stock paper. Here's why. The paint's going to eat this up after a while. This way I make a duplicate copy. I could cut those out later when I need them before I start wrecking all these other stencils. That'll just preserve them even that much more. What we're going to do is we're going to show you a test, and a test is on our big Plano, our, our foot locker here. And the best way to do it is to show you. You can see it's almost close to the same green. And understanding camouflage is about two things. It's about creating contrast, contrast being light and dark. So we have a fairly dark background, even though there are going to be times we're going to add a little bit more dark, but we're also going to blend it in. So let's show you how, what we're going to try to accomplish here. Because your marsh grass is yellow, now look what you're just doing. See? Didn't have to pay a whole bunch of money for a custom paint job. Now that the boat is all gussied up and ready to make a fashion statement, there's only one thing left to do. Get it in the water. We called Hoppy and we were saying, you know, oh man, this weather's killing us at home. You know, I mean, we, we had 60 degree weather in December. Well, I mean, what do you do? And we figured, well, you know, we got to go to the ATA show. Maybe Hoppy might have a little opening right after Christmas. We'll shoot down, have a blast. Lo and behold, Hoppy said, come on down. So right after Christmas, we, we packed up the war wagon and we headed south. Heading down to Hoppy's is a tradition in this family. Ralph, Vicky, RJ, and the crew love to spend time with their Florida family, the Kempfords. Oh, oh I got to get Ralph's Christmas present. No, I got one. I don't need nothing. No, really, we got you something. Hold on. You know, when Hoppy says he has something for most people, you get excited. When Hoppy says he has something for me, I get nervous. Yeah, I, think, I, I think I know what that is, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> really? This is for you. Turn the cameras off. Turn the cameras off. Yeah, you can open it. We got this for Ralph, and it's to go with his new van, Van Diesel. Van Diesel. Which is good for anything. Hold on, close your eyes. Close your eyes. <laughs> Here's the uniform that goes with it. <laughs> Oh, you are something else. <laughs> well, I mean, what? No, no, you're right. Oh, okay. and, 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 oh wait. Band. Hold on. Hold on. And we couldn't get the magnetic one in, but you could probably put this <laughs> in. <window. laughs> you, know? you know what? It doesn't matter whenever we go down to Florida. You get down there, and it's like we've never left. And it's like I can almost take a break because there's so many other people to help me 
torment my husband. Besides the war machine, there's even a newer addition to the Cian Ciarulo's arsenal of fun, a tracker grizzly all geared up for bow fishing and painted by Ralph himself. After loading up the boat and making the long journey to Florida, the crew arrives at Hoppy's in time to exchange some presents and, of course, a little elbow to the ribs. We brought the new war machine. Yeah, with the war van, we have the new war machine. Our, our new tracker boat, and it's they rigged this up for bow fishing. And, well, where else do you bring it but to Uncle Hops? Yeah, and they know boats. We really don't know them, so I camoed it, and this is the first time it's hitting the water. And it's going to stay down here for a while, because then when we come back turkey hunting, we'll do some more bow fishing, and then we'll take it home for a while if Hoppy lets us. Our boat hit the water for the first time. Pretty cool. Our grizzly. They just stole your boat. They just stole my boat. I knew it. I knew he would take my boat. They're gone. All right, so I'm pumped up, you know, and it's always good to have people around you that, that, that handle boats or whatever it is, motorcycles, whatever it is. Always good to have those people around if you're not really familiar with it. Now, having them around is one thing. Having them leave you on shore for the first time your boat's going out is an absolute another thing. It was fun. It unloaded perfect, it loaded perfect. We did hit a rock in the middle of Hoppy's Lake. Don't know where it came from, but we hit it, so we put some really good gouges in the prop on the first three and a half minutes of driving the boat. What prop? Um, otherwise, they said it's awesome. So now we're gonna get in the, get in the canals and the other lakes and do some bow fishing with them. It's December 28th. We are down in Central Florida hunting with Uncle Hop and Sage and boys. Um, it is hot out. It's been a few months since I've had to take my thermosel out and I'm very happy to have it with me tonight. On the list this, evening, this afternoon, we have hogs, deer, um, just about anything that comes by. I've got a couple doe tags. We can shoot an eight point buck or better if it comes by. Freddie's sitting here behind the camera. He needs meat for the freezer. We need some hog meat for the freezer. I mean. Who knows what's going to happen? We'll just keep our fingers crossed that something comes by. With Freddie and Vicky settled into the blind and the thermocell working overtime to keep the bugs away, the deer start showing up. This will be Vicky's first Florida deer hunt, but more importantly, a chance to fill the freezer. Let's check in with Ralph and see how the hunt is going. We just got in our stands here. Down here in Florida, it's like December 28th, something like that. It's 85 degrees. We are getting an ice storm back home in northwestern Illinois. And we're hunting in t-shirts, short sleeve t-shirts. It's 85 degrees and the mosquitoes are out. Yeah. We're down here with Hoppy and Osceola Outfitters as usual, back down in Florida. And we're having a blast our first night sit. So I'm in the first night of the stand and I'm sitting there and I'm starting to realize this is pretty cool. Well, stop. It ain't cool. It's hot and it whole, adds a whole new dynamic to hunting. And now I see what all the Southerners feel because this is miserable. I'm not enjoying it, getting a suntan while I'm deer hunting. Now I'm sitting there waiting, 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 waiting. But I saw a Floridian raccoon. Ralph and Vicky are hitting the stands for the first night out at Hoppy's. Ralph has a record book raccoon on his stand, but Vicky has some does in the field and is waiting to let her beeman white out fly. Florida deer. There's a doe that is 
have been blowing at us all night long. The wind's been swirling around. And they finally just came in at last light. And I'm like, you got him? Freddie's like, yep. Bam, they smacked her my ear. I could hear that dry bag just hit her. She jumped all four legs up off the ground and ran into the into the timber right there. I heard her crash, so now I just text Sage to let him know. And um, we're gonna go get my dough, Freddie. <laughs> She went in here, and I think she's like right yep. behind this, right here. She's right there. Yeah, right yeah, in, right did. in here. Maybe. I'm like, maybe. Oh man, she was pouring it in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? We're filling freezer meat and having a blast when it's warm outside, not freezing cold in the winter storm at home. And um, one doe down. I don't think Ralph shot anything tonight, but. I believe Mr. Steve shot one far off in the distance also, so we'll get her gutted out. We'll take her back to the ranch, back to the building, get her gutted out, get her hanging up so we can cool off that meat and fill our freezers up. Thank you, Sage. You're welcome. Thank you, Hoppy. Thank you, Lord, for this afternoon. Wow, beautiful. Okay, so it's the first night, and I, you know what? I think Hoppy must like me better than Ralph because he put me where we saw all kinds of does that night. I mean, he knew that's where I needed to be, Ralph, he saw a raccoon. <laughs> That's right, favorism. There's nothing wrong with being the favorite, just saying. The beginnings of the Kempfer Ranch date all the way back to the late 1800s. Originally purchased for a timber and cattle operation, Patriarch George W. Hopkins bought the original 196,000 acres for just under a dollar an acre. From there, a sawmill was built and a railway was created to move timber from the vast swamps to the sawmill and on to markets abroad. George's daughter Agnes married George H. Kempfer, who started handling the timber operations. Shortly thereafter, the Kempfer Land and Cattle Company was formed, and from there, the Kempfer family has worked the ranch daily through the decades. Billy and Reed Kempfer now operate approximately 25,000 acres of the original land their ancestors worked so long ago. And now, in addition to working cattle, Billy's brother Hoppy operates the famed Osceola Outfitters. And from there, shall we say, the rest is history. We just got in this stand. You can see it's sunny. Again, it's in the upper 80s today. We're hoping that today's a little bit better than yesterday with the movement. Hunting in Florida in December is much different than hunting in Illinois. Temperature is one thing, but the ag fields and timbered creek bottoms of the Midwest are way different than the palmetto thickets and swamps of the Sunshine State. No matter where you pursue the whitetail, you have to appreciate the diversity of landscapes they live in. This hunt session is coming to a close without Ralph unleashing an arrow. Maybe tomorrow will bring some meat into range. Well, this morning, Hoppy got us set up on a beautiful pitch point. I mean, we got swamp here, we got swamp there. We got, they call this a hill. And you have to understand what a hill is here in Florida. A hill is any land that's above water. We're on a hill. <laughs> we could hear birds, we could hear osceolas up here somewhere, they're going to start to fly down. We're down here with Hoppy Kemp for Osceola Outfitters. Well, the hill hasn't yielded meat for the freezer yet, but it's not from Ralph's lack of trying. I'm sitting there on the hill. It's the second day. The hill, I don't know why they call it a hill. I don't even truly believe there's a hill in Florida. It's all flat. It's all swamp, and it's all hot. And oh, I get a text while I'm sitting there like baking. And Vicky's like, oh, I'm seeing a bunch of deer. How about you? <laughs> yeah, how, hill, gar hole, can you say? Well, I have a prediction, and that is um, high probability of precipitation today. Hoppy and we're all getting ready to go head out and 
looked at the radar and it said, sure, better stay in camp for a minute and you could see why. But it's only gonna be here for a little, little bit and then we're, we'll be hunting. I hope. Who's gonna let a little rain stop them from getting after it? I'm a big fan in hunting, either before or after, like one of the a weather front comes in. And in Florida, weather fronts come in like every hour. So you better be prepared. The thing was, is I got in this spot and I think Hoppy really just, you know, wanted to appease me because, you know, Vicki, she got hers and she was all happy and, you know, it's just, well, Ralph, we'll just take it. Let's take care of Ralph now. You know, so he puts me in a spot and we have action and I'm pumped. Did it! Finally got it. I got my first Floridian whitetail, and she's beautiful, and she's going in the freezer, and I'm helping Hoppy do some management. But don't you ever realize, like, on every week, I have to work a lot harder? It seems like they take care of her, Vicky. But Ralph, different story. Spitfire, baby. Hey, buddy. Uh, nice doe. Nice. And does and yearlings, you know what I mean? Earlier, they, they came, they got our wind, went over there, snorted, took off. Then they slowly started to come back, but we were losing light fast. she come in, she was over there, hit her, arrow, complete, and then she ran. I, we just, she, blood was coming out of her chest big time. I mean, she, we heard her crash somewhere up in here. Yeah. Right there, all on this bus. Well, I'll tell you what, as usual down here at, at Hops, and we had a blast tonight. Chad and I sat up in the stand, and we saw a bunch of deer. They, they came in early, and they winded us. They took off, and they slowly meandered back, but this doe didn't go far. We got a beautiful shot on her, Spitfire. She went, what do you think, Sage? 50? 50 or so. Yeah. We got some meat in the freezer. Floridian whitetail. Hmm. Ever had that before? Not gonna be much over a hundred. Oh, 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 oh! Head's still on the ground. What is it? Two, two eleven. What is it? Wait, he's lifting up on it. <laughs> one hundred and ten. Excuse me, what was Vicky's? One hundred fifty. No, it was yeah, not. Yeah, it was. It was one hundred fifteen, wasn't no, it? No, it was not. It was ninety some pounds. It was not ninety some pounds. It, it was, was like ninety two. No, it wasn't. So you killed the smartest one. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Got her. See? A lot of hard work for me, you know that? A lot of hard work. But the big ragu did it again. Happy Osceol Outfitters. Thank you guys so much for having us down there and joining you in all the festivities. Yeah, and thank <laughs> you all the campers for the for the mental abuse that you, you continually give me and you know. <laughs> You know, I've said this for many years, and at one time I was like 6'6", six, six, but mentally she has beat me down to 5'6". Oh. And it's not just her, it's everybody, so. Thanks for watching this week's Archer's Choice. We'll see you next week, same time. Same channel. Right here on the Archer's Choice.